Hello mga kameranda, si Coach Miranda Minor. Ang ating topic for today is about Ethereum. Nako, napakagandang topic. So tune in na and let's all learn about cryptocurrency all in one channel. All right. So simulan na natin, no? So si Bitcoin ay naging basis kung bakit si Ethereum ay pinanganak, no? Si Bitcoin ay form of a decentralized money and it actually created the concept of decentralized form of money without the need for intermediaries. Bawat transaction ay binavalidate ng network. There's no single point of failure and there's no way that the system can be controlled or manipulated. The interesting thing about blockchain is that it is actually a byproduct of Bitcoin investing. It's actually created by fusing existing technology like cryptography, proof of work, and decentralized architecture in order to make a decision without a central authority. There was no such thing as a blockchain authority before Bitcoin was invested. So basically, blockchain is to Bitcoin and internet is into email. Basically, ang blockchain is isang system kung saan you can create programs. Bitcoin is just one of the options. So in this particular case, people got interested. So they asked, what else can be decentralized? So if you would like to decentralize a particular system, kailangan mo ng maraming gamit. You need an entire set of computers, an entire set of networking to be able to put it all together. Back then, it was only Bitcoin na nag exists and it's quite limited. And it's actually written using the programming language Turing Incomplete or which makes it a bit limited. You need different programming languages which means you need a different network to be able to have more transactions. Imagine Imagine mo, if you want to create Bitcoin system in your home, you need to get a huge network of computers at home to get this running. Diba? Parang ang daming trabaho. Enter Ethereum. So, no 2013, it was proposed and then in 2014, it was brought to life by a guy named Vitalik Buterin, which is also a co-founder and a writer of Bitcoin Magazine. Ethereum is actually for do-it-yourself platforms or dApps. Dapps basically means decentralized applications. So, if you would like to create an application, there's no single person or anyone that can control it, not even the person who wrote it. All you have to do is to learn Solidity, which is actually the programming language of Ethereum, and begin coding. Basically, Ethereum is fully decentralized. Once a program is deployed to the Ethereum network, these computers known as nodes make sure it will execute as written. Ethereum is also an infrastructure for running dApps worldwide. It's not a currency, it is a platform. Ulitin ko, kameranda. It's not a currency, it is a platform. The currency used to incentivize the network is called Ether. Ethereum's goal is to truly decentralize the internet. Pero teka lang, bakit sinasabi natin centralized? Akala ba natin ang internet is already decentralized? Alam ba natin that there is no central authority behind internet? While that is somehow true, si Amazon, Google, Facebook, and Netflix, meron pa rin nagkocontrol sa kanila. Here, is almost no activity on the web that happens without some sort of intermediaries or third party. Pero nung naimbento yung concept of digital centralization, it was actually demonstrated by Bitcoin. A whole new array of options became available. Then we can finally start to imagine and design na ang internet ay pwedeng mag-connect ng users directly without the need for a decentralized third party. They could now rent hard drives and make drop boxes obsolete. They could now have drivers contact passengers wala na sa mga grab or ano pa mga, mga middle person. Before, people can buy crypto from one another without the need for an exchange and right now that's actually something that people are expecting and craving about. Ethereum allows people to connect directly with each another without an authority. It's actually a network of computers that combines one power powerful supercomputer. So paano niya ito ginagawa? So basically, Ethereum has a coding language called Solidity. It's actually used to write smart contracts. That is actually the logic that runs decentralized applications or dApps. In real life, all of the contracts are actually set of if and then. Meaning, if the set of conditions and actions are met, then it will be executed. For example, kung ako ay magre-rent ng aking uh, lupa sa aking landlord, magabayad ako ng uh, 1,000 pesos, then hahayaan niya akong i-rent yung lupa niya. Ganun din for smart contracts. For Ethereum, they've actually developed the writing condition for the programs specifically for decentralized applications and the Ethereum network executes it. Ulitin ko, yung mga smart contracts, ini-execute sila ng Ethereum network itself. These are called smart contracts because they deal with all of the aspects of the contracts. Endorsements, management, performance, and payment. So basically, smart contracts are self-executing. In the context of Ethereum, it is actually uncompromisingly letter strict. It follows all the rules and cannot take any exceptions. For example, in any of the contracts in the real world or in the physical world, meron mga exceptions, may mga gray areas ang mga patay. 
taas. In this case, pwede mo siyang i-appeal from a particular contract perspective. Hindi ganoon in the cryptocurrency world. The only reason that the contract in the cryptocurrency world can be changed is when we need to convince all of the Ethereum participants to change the contract which cannot be changed virtually. Unlike Bitcoin, Ethereum is actually built with an ability to create really complex contracts. Pag-usapan naman natin ngayon ang difference ng Ethereum Classic with Ethereum number 2. So, no mga 2014 to 2015, there was a decentralized autonomous organization or DAO na nag-allow ng mga users to deposit money and get returns based on the investments in the DAO that they made. The decisions made will be based on the folks who contributed. So, on that particular time, the DAO was able to raise $150 million in Ethereum currency. Ulitin ko ha, in Ethereum currency. Ether, when it was trading way back, was 20 US dollars. While that sounds good, the code wasn't secured and it resulted into something figuring out a way to be able to drain money out of the system. Someone argued that this is actually probably someone who saw the loopholes in the contract. Parang attorney lang yan na naghahanap ng mga loopholes for his client in a particular contract. So what have happened is that the Ethereum community saw that the code is not okay. So when this happened, the writers made something that's inappropriate and then developers decided just to bail them out. Yung mga tao hindi na agree they were stuck with the old contract which is now called Ethereum Classic. Yung mga nag-agree naman, they are now creating or forming the group called Ethereum. Basically, Ethereum as a currency naman, it is actually a large bunch of computers to execute code that powers the dApps. This causes money. Money to power the machine and to store them. Si Ether, siya ay invento to be able to incentivize people that run Ethereum protocol in their computer. So in theory, para lang din silang mga Bitcoin miners who are being incentivized in the Bitcoin blockchain. Kamiranda, noong 2014, Ethereum is just worth a little less than a dollar. Ngayon, sobrang laki niya na at around almost $2,000. Ano sa tingin mo? Magkano kaya magiging value ng Ethereum? Uy, type down naman sa comments if you have liked this video. Maraming salamat, Kamiranda, and I love you 3,000. Subscribe, like, follow, and share. Sige na please, Kamiranda.